We're here at Wellington Zoo with Kathy Brader from the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington DC. At the Smithsonian National Zoo, Kathleen is in charge of the zoo's Kiwi breeding and public education programs. She has written extensive publications on Kiwi conservation. In 2012, Prime Minister John Key appointed Kathleen Honorary Member of the New Zealand Order of Merit. So Kathy is in Wellington today to receive her honour. We met up with Kathy at Wellington Zoo while she checked out the zoo's Kiwi program. But you've worked at the Smithsonian Zoo for, in Washington DC for 25 years. 27 and started. 27 actually, okay. <laughs> and yeah. in that time, you, you know, you've hatched and raised six Kiwis, created a Kiwi public education program. Yeah written numerous publications amongst many other things, you know, what sparked your interest in Kiwi like all those years ago? When I first got my assignment, when I went to the zoo, and I was obviously in the bird unit, and they had at that point just two Kiwi, um, though they had hatched the first Kiwi ever outside of New Zealand, but that was in 1975. So when they said, oh, and by the way, we're going through all these, introducing me to all the new, my charges, and then they opened the door and they came in and said, well, you, and you got the kiwi. And it was kind of at that point, kind of this like, well, we have them, but nobody was doing anything with them. Mm -hmm. And the first time I saw one, I was like, oh, that is awesome. Right from the get go, it was that connection with that bird that, um, for whatever reason, they just speak to me. They speak yeah. to my soul. I know it sounds a little corny, but that's how it feels to me. So what do you like most working about with Kiwis? Because oh, <laughs> um, I think they remind me of me. They're very independent, you know? Yeah. They, they do what they want when they want. They don't have to be PC. <laughs> I have to be a little more PC. Um, but they're just, you know, they, they do their thing. They know, I always say to people, isn't it wonderful? Here you hatch out. Because they don't imprint. Their parents really don't rear, rear them. So they're not going out and showing you the world, you know, this is what you, oh, don't do that, that's bad. They hatch out knowing that they're hard, I explain it to kids like a computer term, they're hardwired. There's not a lot of soft, it's not that Kiwi can't learn, but there's not a lot of what we think about soft programming that goes into these animals. They come out, they know they're a Kiwi, they know what they're going to do, they know when they're going to do it. And I said, how wonderful life would be if we all came out kind of knowing what we were supposed to do in life. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's kind of cool. You don't have to, oh my gosh, you have the anxiety of figuring out all this stuff and, and stuff. So I think part of that was, and that they're just so independent. They just like, they are what they are and there's no changing them. And so some are more nice and some are not. And I like, I tend to like animals, I think that are a little bit more aggressive. Don't ask, I don't know why, but you know, they're just, they do their thing and they're yeah. like they're not bothered by what you know get out of their way let them do it and I, I like that independent spirit I think yeah. a lot of it's that yeah you know yeah. and I know a lot of New Zealanders that I met have said oh yeah well that's us you know we're independent we think our own way and we yeah. do what we need to do so um, yeah I like that it's very I think uh, says a lot about the animal yeah the reason that you are here in New Zealand actually is because you are being awarded an honorary membership to the New Zealand Order of Merit um, you know what for your Kiwi conservation efforts, yeah. um, you know, what's that like for you? It's hard to explain because yeah. I'm an American, so um, I, oh, I, my father is a first generation English. And his grandparents came, and he was born in the United States. And he said to me um, about a, a few months ago when we were talking about this, how much he had wished his grand his parents were still alive. He says they would have been so overwhelmed that somebody in their family, because of the British connection and the sovereignty yeah. and all that, that, oh my gosh, you know how big it is. So it, it I always knew it was big and yeah. it was very special. And, and But the more you kind of read about it, the more you talk to people and you realize, yeah. this is huge. And yeah. that there are a lot of people that, you know, are so deserving. And, yeah. and I don't know how I got to be the face of the, the kind of, but I've become that, not, not, I mean, obviously I made the choices to do the, the work. But it wasn't with any kind of design in mind. That way, I've always been about the bird yeah. and doing right by it. And somebody has to do it, and it just sort of kind of, that's what I did. Of course, I'm pleased, That's, but it's yeah. still kind of like, yeah. oh my gosh, really? You sure? <laughs> you, you know? But what I hope to take back from that is that, that they recognize that we're, we're important to New Zealand, you know, that we are, we're, it's not just about me and what I've done, but it's about that whole picture of Kiwi overseas yeah. and about your bird and, and how wonderful, and it is special. It's yes. unique. There is nothing like it, you know? It's, it's astounding, so yes, it's overwhelming and I'm still stunned, and, 
I'm not sure. It's going to be very exciting and yes, interesting. You are very deserving of it. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> You also, um, you know, pioneered this repatriation project, which oh, yes. collects, you know, kiwi feathers from zoos, you know, worldwide, and then sends them back to New Zealand. And what was your inspiration behind that? Um, project? I was a New Zealander, so I'll tell you the little story. <laughs> um, yeah. A gentleman there was uh, working. He said, "My father-in-law, who's a Maori, would like to come. Can I bring him in to see a kiwi?" And I said, "Oh, sure." So we did that, and at the time, I had the adult one and then yeah. we had two young females and he was a very quiet kind of stoic gentleman he was retired and he's petting and feeding you know and a couple feathers molted out and he picked them up and I kind of laughed and I said it's totally illegal I said I'll oh, just <laughs> stick them in your wallet nobody will know <laughs> and his father goes you you do know what I do for a living and I'm like oh god no but you're gonna tell me and it's not good and he laughed and he said well you know I really kind of do all the, the customs and stuff and he says don't yeah. worry dad I'll fill out the paperwork so you can legally take these home and I asked him why he was he interested and he said well I'm learning how to do the traditional feather weaving and he says you can't get these feathers and so it kind of got me thinking about it and then I thought well how stupid this American's going to come and say, would you like us to collect kiwi feathers to send back to New Zealand? You have a lot of birds here, a lot more mm -hmm. than I do. But I thought, let me ask first, was there any interest? Or are they going to laugh at me and say, you yeah. silly American girl, go away. <laughs> you know, we have plenty of kiwi here. And it, the response he got was overwhelming. And so then we had to figure out, can we do it from a biosecurity standpoint? Yeah. So he worked all that out so that we could make sure everything was, we're not going to bring anything in that's going to cause problems. So we did that. I work for the federal government of the United States, so our Kiwi technically are federal government property, which adds another layer of bureaucracy, as you can imagine, onto this. So then I had to get approval from my end to do this, so we yeah. repatriate them back is how the United States looks at it. Mm -hmm. Because of my position with the stud book, overrun, you know, what we call the species survival plan, so I overlook all these zoos that have it, I can sort of mandate in, in that things that they have to do. So I did a mandate saying, yeah. if you have kiwi, you have to collect these feathers and send them to me. I don't know how happy they were all about collecting <laughs> these feathers all over the ground, but they did. And so every zoo um, collects these feathers. They send them to me once a year in Washington. Mm -hmm. We just did our third shipment over. Um, I just take them over to the embassy. It's very great. So we don't have to go through all that. They do all the paperwork. We send it over there. They take them and make sure it goes to Department of Conservation, which are then handled with the Maori. Yeah. And so the, the feathers are either used for new projects yeah. or for uh, repairing. Yeah. And I always said, this is such a win-win yeah. situation. It's no big deal on our end to do this. It's just kind of time um, to collect this stuff. Um, and for me, it's a way for our birds to kind of have um, a forever and lasting yeah. kind of thing that they're preserved here, yeah. you know, and um, I think that's more special than anything. Yes, you know, thank you very much oh, yeah. for talking welcome. to us, yes, and no, I hope welcome. you enjoy the rest of your time in New Zealand. Oh, I will. And oh, very yeah. congratulations. Oh, thank you for your um, point in this afternoon. Oh, thank you. <laughs>